Hello again, I'm Paul Beckwith. You know, as we get more and more heat waves around the world, the necessity for air conditioning, not as a want, but as a ne absolute necessity for survival is becoming greater and greater. As I mentioned in the previous video, in um, the summer of 2018, we had about 1.6 billion air conditioners globally. And that number is projected to rise to 5.6 billion uh, by 2050, according to the IEA, the International Energy Agency. And the amount of energy to run 5.6 billion air conditioners in 2050 would be more than the total electrical consumption of China at the moment. So let me get right back into um, my discussions on AC. Um, so this is the article that I was talking about at the end of the last video. Do Americans need air conditioning? So I'll just continue uh, where I left off before. And um, there, are, there is some interesting work being, well, here, here's a comment. Cooling is the removal of heat, a form of dieting, according to Neri Oxman, a computational designer and architect in charge of the Mediated Matter Group at MIT's Media Lab. And I'll talk a little bit about her in a few minutes. But she and her colleagues are developing self-cooling building facades and clothing. Okay. Overcooling using conventional AC is extreme dieting, removing calories without improving nutrition, she said. You know, one ends up installing heaters in the summer in office spaces that when the office doesn't enable local temperature control, right? Um, so they're working with polymers and bacteria and things to try to, you know, grow different building facades and wearables, for example, clothing with full of arteries to hold cooled liquids or gases, for example, so the actual clothing could cool the body. I've talked about using thermoelectric coolers um, to, to cool uh, people from a company called Dharma Industries in India. I've talked about in, in, that in some previous videos. Um, so, so this is uh, what, what they're looking at. Um, and she hacked the air AC system in her own office because, you know, because it was too icy in the summer. So there's a study published in Nature, and I'll show you that, that notes how building temperatures once set, in the comfort, once set to the comfort preferences of 1960s era men in suits. It disregards the thermal comfort of female staffers. Um, so, you know, it's a, the temperature setting in a building. I mean, how, how do you set it? You want to aim for the thermal comfort of 80% of the building's occupants, which means, of course, that 20% will be uncomfortable, if not miserable. Um, so there's standards on the temperature from the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers, and they suggest building temperatures range from 67 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and they're set according to some complex calculus that depends on the number of occupants in the building, what they're wearing. There's values assigned to 17 clothing styles, including sweatpants, mini skirts, and bathrobes. Uh, not, um, not nakedness, but uh, maybe that'll come soon. Humidity, airspeed at one's ankles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So to figure it out, you have to have a building manager uh, that's uh, like Stephen Hawkins. This is the air conditioning system of a place called BRR, BRRRN Fitness Burn Fitness. The temperature is kept at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a fitness club in New York and they keep the temperature really low because they think there's benefits to people working out when the temperature is really low. So, you know, this article is from the New York Times. They set their thermostats between 74 to 76. Um, so if you set that, if you had that temperature in the, in the winter, um, you know, inside your house, it would be ridiculous, right? But that's the temperature in the summer. You set that to that temperature and people are shivering in sweatshirts and sweaters, mostly women because they like it slightly warmer. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so, so here is in the summer months, temperature is similarly considered. The thermostat set to 72 to 74. Um, it's a number gleaned from reading studies that suggested men were happier at 70 degrees and women at temperatures 2.5 degrees higher. So, so men prefer it to be colder and women prefer it to be slight, you know, men, men prefer it to be 70 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit, not Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit, and women prefer it to be 72.5. This, of course, you know, causes a lot of uh, gender uh, disagreement. 
okay um and uh you know passive buildings with no air conditioning at all is a really good idea buildings can be designed for that this works as long as you have large temperature differences between night and day so if it gets super warm during the day fine but as long as it cools at night you can open all the windows and have uh, airflow in the building and cool the building you know to a decent temperature and then shut it up and seal it during the day and this passive type of feature um, can save tremendously on heating costs. I mean, this, this is what, um, you know, what people do in their houses, right? This is what I'm currently doing now to try to keep my indoor temperature uh, low, okay? Um, and uh, there, there's a survey, there's, an int there's a cloud-based app called Roast, which is really interesting. Um, basically, it's a survey that people do online you know, about their particular spot in a building, and then you can analyze the whole building and see, you know, what, how the temperature difference is and how people, you know, uh, react to it. Um, but w one of the things is that women are more inclined to participate in these study surveys than males, so you can might get some skewed results. Um, but uh, gender is less a predictor of thermal comfort than other factors like age, activity level, or metabolic rate, or the relative wealth of the society surveyed. Okay, people in country, this is from the Center for the Built Environment at University of California, Berkeley. So people in countries with lower GDPs um, are, have more, are more comfortable with a wider range of temperatures. Okay, for, so first world discomfort with temperatures is a learned behavior. Okay, and this is one of the things that occurs because of the high penetration rates of AC in um, you know in the US for example so this is an article from a few years back of the this is Willis Carrier the inventor of air conditioner this is the engineer who was you know the the humidity in the uh, room where they had a Brooklyn uh, printing plant um, gummed up the um, it wrecked the printing because what they had to do is they would print um, different color to get color printing they would print one color then print another color, then print another color. But because of humidity changes and temperature changes, um, there'd be expansion or contraction of the printing presses and or the paper, so the colors wouldn't match up properly. To the, the different printing of the three primary colors wouldn't match up to give you the color, so you'd get blurriness and that. So, so they wanted to, temp to basically get constant uniform conditions inside, and this is an engineer who worked at that plant who first did that, and that's basically the first air conditioning. And this is the building that it's in, okay? Um, and uh, so this is actually quite interesting. So, you know, this is an air conditioning unit in a store at about 1935, counter high box. Okay, so that's a bit about the history of the air conditioning. Now, the future of cooling. This is the International Energy Agency and they talk about, you know, cooling down is catching on. As incomes rise and populations grow in the world's hotter regions, air conditioning is become increasingly common. The use of air conditioners and electric fans already accounts for about a fifth of the total electricity in buildings around the world, or 10% of all global energy consumption. But over the next three decades, out to 2050, the use of ACs is set to soar, being one of the top drivers of global electricity demand. Okay, so there's a whole report here. Um, you can download this report on the future of cooling and have a look at it. But what I'll, I'll look at some of the highlights. So this is the percentage of households that have AC today. So Japan, 91% um, of households in Japan have AC. That's about 90% in the US. Korea is at 86. Saudi Arabia is at 63. China is 60%. Mexico down to 16, Brazil 16, Indonesia 9, South Africa 6, and India about 5%. Um, the rate in India, of course, is India is you know, really, really hot and is only 5%. You know, those 5% numbers are also typical in many European countries like uh, France, for example, and Germany is a bit, even a bit lower than that. Okay, the world faces a cold crunch. So, you know, here we go, you know, 2020, this is the number of units in the U.S., almost 400 million units and all the other countries, for example. And this is the growth expected, you know, so out to 2050, 
you know, massive in, in growth. So massive growth, you can look at the curves here and you can see this is the millions of units um, and, uh, you know, tremendous growth in the number of air conditioners projected. Cooling is the fastest growing use of energy in buildings. So here you have the final, elect you have final electricity demand growth to 2050, space cooling 37%, residential appliances 25.5, lighting small, heating small. So AC is much, much higher than all of the others. The energy performance of air conditioners, this is the efficiency and it's given in, in something called SEER. You know, Europe, um, Three to three to eleven, right? Look at the U.S. You know, three point five to twelve point three can be some very efficient units. There's Japan, and then the the market averages are shown also. But you can see that you know efficiency less than half of what's typically available on the shelves. The average efficiency of air conditioners sold today is less than half what's typically available. One third of the best, one third the efficiency of the best available. So we've got lots of room here in terms of efficiency. And this is the, uh, you know, cooling will drive peak electricity demand. So efficiency, you know, there's all kinds of stuff in this report, have a look at it. Um, Neri Oxman, the MIT material labs person is shown here. And, uh, you know, they're doing all kinds of neat uh, stuff here, growing um, silkworms on little platforms and, doing, you know, looking at wearables to cool people and look at things, you know, ways to cool building and working with all kinds of different structures and things like that. She gave a TED talk. I haven't watched it yet in 2015, um, but I'll have to have a look at that. But all kinds of different structures and things and, uh, you know, really some really neat work going on here. This is uh, this is their their lab. Uh, uh, so Dr. Oxman at her laboratory. I mean, I'd love to have a lab like that. Um, okay, so energy consumption in buildings and female thermal demand, right? I said that, the, you know, males prefer it at 70 Fahrenheit, females at 72.5. Um, indoor climate regulations are based on a comfort model developed in the 60s for men in suits, right? I mean, one of the key things is the metabolic rate, space when they, the average metabolic rate, you know, the average male, I believe, burns about 100 watts. Remember the old light bulb, 100 watt light bulbs? Okay, um, and, uh, you know, females are different, kids are uh, different. So if you tailor the temperature, right, uh, then, then uh, you know, males are, like, like if you use the metabolic rate based on the average male, that may overestimate the female metabolic rate by up to 35%, even more so with kids. So that's one of the issues, you know, what temperature do you do? You, you know, you, you want to try to make 80% of the people in the building comfortable, 20% aren't, the 20% will likely be, be the woman or the, or the children, right? So this is an article there. I mentioned this, um, this is BRRRN, this is a site where they keep it at 50, 50, this is a gym basically, where they keep the temperature at 50 Fahrenheit. And they say it improves endurance and recovery. You can burn more flat, more fat and more calories and you can have better focus and energy. So this is, now this is a crazy thing. This is Ski Dubai. You know, if you don't, you're not familiar with this, have a look at it. It's a huge skiing area at a mall in Dubai, okay? Um, it's at the Mall of the Emirates, one of the largest shopping malls in the world in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, 22,500 square meters. It's an indoor skiing area, you know, 85 meter high indoor mountain, equivalent to a 25 story building, five slopes, ski slopes, a 400 meter run, a black diamond run. It's all indoors. You know, it's crazy. I mean, they keep the temperature, you know, about minus, you know, just below zero. So that this, and they make the snow so it falls down on people while they're inside the mall. I mean, think of the energy and the excesses to do that. This is the Roast app, which is quite interesting. There's all of these questions about the air comfort and temperature and humidity and stuff. And people in different regions of a building can analyze it and you can see how an entire building responds. This is the, um, Center for the Built Environment, all kinds of stuff on AC and efficiency and so on. So I think I'll basically end there. Thanks for listening.